Good afternoon, I'm Bridget Washington, chef and cookbook author. For this Facebook Live event at the Dinah E. Gore Teaching and Research Kitchen, we're going to jump right in into two summer essentials, ratatouille and citrusy chicken breasts. So let's get started. Ratatouille is a classical French dish, and it's also a dish that was born out of necessity. It is said to believe that these ingredients, eggplant, tomatoes, and summer squash, as well as an onion and garlic, were provincial foods. And these foods still form the basis of a dish that many have come to know and love around the world. One of the main ingredients in ratatouille is eggplant. An eggplant has a very mild texture and a creamy flavor. And when you're purchasing eggplant, choose one that's heavy in relation to its size with a firm skin. The leafy top should also be firmly intact. Eggplant, when they're fresh, should be very, very hard to the touch. Um, eggplants are workhorses in terms of its vitamin content. They have a high level of vitamin A, C, and K. They're also good at regulating blood pressure. Now we're gonna go on to every everyone's favorite summer produce, tomatoes. What I love about tomatoes and what a lot of people forget about tomatoes is that they contain incredibly high volumes of the compound lycopene. And lycopene is an anti-inflammatory, which naturally helps with digestion. In addition, tomatoes are at its best during this peak summer season, and they form the basis of ratatouille. Next thing we have is our zucchini and summer squash. Zucchini and summer squash contains incredible high amounts of water. So while you're eating it, it is important to remember that this ratatouille will yield its own water. In the recipe, it doesn't call for any type of liquid, but you'll see at the end that how incredibly juicy and flavorful this simple dish is. Um, the summer squash and the zucchini are also very high in vitamin C and K, and they help regulate blood pressure and aid in digestion. So let's start get cooking. So we're gonna first start with some nice fragrant olive oil. We're gonna just add that into the pan. Next, and then let that come to temp. And here we have a nice sweet Vidalia onion. And this dish, it's not only is it incredibly simple, but it almost begs for your neglect. You put everything in the pan, in the pot, and it is incredibly, incredibly satisfying to see all of these complex flavors come to life in such a simple application. I'm gonna stir that around. And you're just gonna sweat these onions out for it to release a little bit of its juices. Next, we're gonna add the garlic. And the garlic adds brilliant punch and spice because none of these traditional ingredients contain any type of um, spicy element, any type of power to it. And the garlic really plays up on a lot of those natural uh, pairings like tomatoes. And as well as like the garlic just brings out a lot of depth from the eggplant and makes and really rounds out the dish. And even though we're adding it in the beginning, trust me, towards the end, you will still be able to taste the garlic's strong impact and it will be absolutely delicious. So we're just gonna sweat these out and it's already starting to smell so fantastic. And you also want to remember, this is a dish that you don't have to, con to play with the heat. You can just leave it on medium heat and let it go all the way through. Okay. 
Next, we're going to include our eggplant. And as you can see here, we have our eggplant cut up in a medium dice, skin on, because they're all vital nutrients to be found in the skin, and the skin really does relent during this cooking process. It's also the reason we're adding it first, uh, after the onion and the garlic, because you want to give it an additional more time to cook. So in goes the eggplant. And we stir that around. And the onion's already doing its thing, releasing all of that nice, minerally sweetness. So once we have the eggplant nice and evenly coated with the olive oil, the garlic, and the onions, we're gonna add our yellow summer squash. And again, still medium dice. And this is where you will see by adding the squash, both the, both squashes, you, this is where you will see a lot of juices naturally sprout. Because like I said earlier, summer squash and zucchini are incredibly high and bountiful in terms of its natural liquid content. And I think it is no act of happenstance that during these balmy summer months, we have all of this produce available to us that are so high in liquid content. Now we're gonna add our zucchini. And that goes. And you're just gonna, again, we want everything to get nice and evenly tossed. And this is as much stirring as you're probably going to do making this ratatouille. And finally, tomatoes. And not only, oops, forgot one. And as you can see, the tomatoes add an eye-popping amount of color, as well as really good tang to this ratatouille. So you get the earthiness from the eggplant. You get that really refreshing bite from the zucchini and summer squash and a tang from the tomatoes. All of these ingredients naturally cohere to make this dish not only incredibly health healthy, but so satisfying. Whoops, we lost one. And it's already starting to sprout juices. So right now, we're just gonna let this cook. Maybe turn on the heat just a tad. Not too much. And it's gonna convect and make something so delicious. So to finish off the ratatouille, we have salt and pepper to taste. And what I like to do when I'm making these types of dishes is yes, I could add the salt probably be Yes, I could add the salt while it's cooking, but I found in terms of moderating my salt intake, it's always best to add it at the end because that way you could actually gauge how much salt you're eating in terms, but if you season it during, you kind of you tend to lose count of how much salt you're putting into the dish. So that's why I always like to reserve adding salt and pepper until after the cooking process. So we're gonna finish, finish off this dish with basil. And basil is an incredibly the delicate leaf with, that packs such a powerful punch. And basil and tomatoes have long been a beloved pairing. However, in this, in this application, when it's melded with the summer squash, as well as the eggplant, 
it not only leans in to the sweetness of the tomatoes, but it really helps to bring out some of those more earthy flavors that you find in the eggplant. And so we're just gonna, here I have some picked. And when you're looking for basil leaves, you really want to look for those that are, um, that are whole. Um, of course, you'll see the edible markings of, you know, when you look looking cover insect having a snack, and that's totally fine. But um, you really just want your basil leaves to be whole and, and really nice and verdant. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna run my knife through these leaves. Um, and, and it is okay to make this a rough chop. It's not supposed to be pretty because like I said, this is a really provincial French stew. It's not one of those dishes that have to be perfect. So we just get all the basil leaves together and I'm just gonna run my knife through that. And that's it. And there we go. And that's how the basil is gonna be. And we're gonna add this to the end after we add the salt and pepper. So let's get cooking with our chicken breasts. So here we have six chicken breasts, and this is a citrusy chicken dish that could work with any parts of the bird. What I love about this dish is that you, it literally only requires salt, pepper, lemon, and lime. And what you get is a dish so complex and so flavorful, it belies its simple ingredient list. So right now, we're just gonna preheat our saute pan and add in the oil and just let that come to temp because you really want to get a nice brown fond and unlike the ratatouille um, in this dish color equals flavor and to get that nice browned fond, the pan does need to be a little bit hot. So first, we're gonna season up our thighs, our breasts, sorry. Whoops, slippery little one. Let's move this to right here. And you could start skin side. Um, you could start it with, with either side. Here we just have um, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and these are going to be incredibly, incredibly flavorful. So here we go. We're going to start with some salt. Nice, good, healthy smothering of salt. And then some black pepper. And I'm already hearing that oil sizzle, which is exactly what you want because you really do want these to go into a hot pan. And then this is the zest of a lime. And you're gonna add that on. And I'm telling you, you're gonna be surprised. You're gonna think there is no way this chicken only has lime zest and lime juice. But that is what citrus does. And also the zest of a lemon. And you could just zest it right on there. This nice, Good spray. And then get all of that. And now this is come to temp. And I'll, instead of what we can do, we just put it right in here. And we hear that good sizzle.
And this is a trick that I like to do when I don't have a lot of time, is that instead of seasoning both sides on the cutting board and then losing some of that seasoning, what I do is that I season, I place the season side down into the pan and then as you'll see here there we go make room there we go i season it now directly into the, the other the other side of the meat that was unseasoned i season it directly into the pan and it's just one little step that saves some time and energy So again, we did the salt, now we're going to black pepper. And the reason why we're using just the zest is because those zest of the lime and the lemon and most citrus fruit contain such unique oils that really does add, completely change the flavor profile of whatever you're cooking. And so you look at a lime and you think, oh, it's just a lime. It's not just a lime. There's some really cool, cool flavors. Now we're just gonna zest the lemon right into the pan, right onto the chicken. And you really want to get as much of the yellow because this, the, white, the white part of the zest is very pithy and it doesn't have the best flavor. So you really want to, when you're zesting, you really want to try to get most of that bright yellow as possible. And that is it. So we're just gonna let this cook. <clears throat> um, we want this to cook until the internal temperature reaches to 165 degrees. And that's, it, it, depending on the size of your piece of chicken, the temperature varies. So there's no one hard and fast way to say this chicken cooks at three minutes or seven minutes per side because what you're really going after is that internal temp of 165. So just gonna let this hang out. Um, I could already smell all of those juices from the citrus really started to come alive and it's gonna be, it's gonna be delicious. And here you can really start to hear that chicken sizzle. And the reason why we use vegetable oil and not an olive oil that we use in the ratatouille is that remembering the ratatouille is cooking on a lower temperature and olive oil is really not best when it is, reaches at a high smoking point. So you really want to use a non, when you're cooking foods at a higher temperature, you really want to use an oil that can handle higher heat. So you could be a vegetable oil, even a grapeseed oil, for instance, would work nicely. Although grapeseed oil tends to be rather expensive. So that's why in this case, a vegetable oil is best. But for the ratatouille that's on a medium flame, that's where you could have the olive oil and really allow those natural flavors of the olive oil to permeate throughout all of the veg. So right now, we're just gonna check to see how these, how this, these pieces of breast are doing. And you see, it's, that's exactly what you're looking for. Nice, consistent, golden brown. So we're just gonna flip each piece. And these darker pieces of brown that you see on the bird, that's where the zest has really been seared into the, into the, the bird. So none of the zest is lost. It just becomes really embedded into, into, the, into the poultry.
And so we're just gonna let this cook until it reaches again 165 degrees. So while the chicken is cooking, we're just gonna check on our ratatouille. And as you can see, it has sprouted so much wonderful juices. Remember, we did not add any sorts of liquid into this, and all of these vegetables are cooking so beautifully just in their own juices. And this is what something that makes dish dish really shine. Because many times when you cook vegetables, you tend to add so much liquid or oils or something else into it. But on its own, with just some onion and garlic and its own juices, it really does come into its own. And all the colors are just spectacular. This is a dish that I go to time and time again during the summer and also in the fall. So just gonna cover this back up and let it do its thing. So our chicken has been cooking. Now we're gonna use our thermometer to find out if it has reached 165 degrees. So I just insert it into the thickest part of the bird, the poultry. And this is actually, this is actually at 140 degrees. So we're probably a couple more minutes until it reaches 165. So our ratatouille looks like it is on its final stages. And you can tell when it is so juicy and all the vegetables are very soft, they have relented. You see the seeds of the eggplant and the zucchini have just come out. And it is really, really, not just flavorful, but very much liquid and soft. And this is exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for those bright colors. You don't want to cook it too much where the colors start to dull. You really want to get it at the place where the colors are still bright and vibrant. Uh, the, the chunks are still there, but they're soft and tender and juicy. So now we are going to season to taste with some salt and some black pepper. And now we're going to stir this around to get all that salt and, and pepper in. And then turn off the heat and you finish with your fresh herbs. You always add the herbs to the end because you don't want them, you don't want any of the flavors to be dulled or diminish during the cooking process. Adding the herbs to the end really ensures that you get as much vibrancy and bite out of the herbs as possible. And this is not just for basil, it's with all herbs. Parsley, mint, what you have got. <clears throat> and now we're gonna plate it. And as you can see, it is just so, 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 delicious and juicy. And this is an entire meal. There is no need for any type of starch. This is a complete meal on its own. Very juicy, very flavorful, quite delicious. Yep. So now we're gonna check our chicken to make sure it is at 165 degrees. And yes, this one has reached 180. Let's check this one here, this thicker piece. And you always want to insert your thermometer into the thickest part of the chicken. And this one, as you can see, is 166.
This one also was at 166. And I'm pretty sure these smaller birds, yep, there we go, 170. And again, 172 and 171. So now we're going to remove this. And as you can see, those are deliciously brown on the bottom. That's exactly what you're looking for. And now we're gonna just have our heat on low and we're going to deglaze because all of these brown bits is gonna form the basis of a very quick pan sauce. So we're gonna, this is lime juice. We're just gonna add it in and using a wooden spoon to scrape up all of those bits. And it really should, the citrus should really bubble and dance in the pan. We're gonna do the same. This is the lemon that we zested. You can use a juicer. Usually I just use a spoon and I make some nice little incisions in it with a spoon and I turn it upside down and I use my hand as my own citrus strainer. And look at that color of this pan gravy. And use the same thing here. I just use my hand. And then I have all the seeds chopped right in my hand. Oh, one escaped. There we go. And this, all this is, is citrus juice. And as you can see, in that, what, 30 seconds, it has reduced beautifully. And so, so many times, you would think that you need to have a pre-bought package of whatever gravy or sauce to make your fruit juicy. But all you actually need is the juice of a lemon and a lime to get this wonderfully flavorful and simple pan gravy. So we're just gonna pour this over our chicken. And there we have it. Citrusy chicken breast and a summer ratatouille using summer squash. All of these, these two dishes not only took about 20 minutes tops total, but they are incredibly flavorful that really hone in on some of summer's best bounty in deceptively simple ways. They are bursting with natural flavors. The chicken is tangy and sweet and juicy because of the zest and juice of lemons and limes, as well as the ratatouille is savory and hearty, but without, a, without that heavy feeling. And so these two dishes are incredibly simple and are really allows you to dive, to take a deep dive into some of summer's best offerings.